Good evening, I'm Vasilio Spalos. Welcome to your Holiday Edition News. We begin tonight with a weekend shooting that sent one person to hospital. It happened on the 100 block of Picton Avenue, with the injuries considered non-life-threatening. There was still a significant police presence at the residence yesterday afternoon, with tape and evidence markers at the scene. Police were unable to provide an update on the shooting today, with no word if there's been an arrest related to the incident. Ottawa and the province are looking into ways to combat alleged illegal fishing being done by Americans in Lake of the Woods and the Rainy River. U.S. fishing guides have been accused of guiding American anglers into Canadian waters illegally. The federal conservatives addressed the issue during Pierre Polyev's recent visit to Fort Francis. Justin Hardy has more. Canadian fishing guides allege that their American counterparts are stepping onto Canadian soil both in summer and winter without having proper Canadian work permits or clearance from the Canadian Border Services Agency. According to Fort Francis leadership, American fishing guides are frequently taking parties of American anglers into Canadian waters to fish. Kenora MP Eric Malillo says he's been following the issue and has been discussing possible solutions with neighbouring Liberal MP Marcus Polowski. It's something that we've talked about quite a bit in a non-partisan way on, on, uh, on that issue. I've also engaged with uh, members of Congress uh, on the Minnesota side uh, to raise some concerns about that. So uh, that's a, a constant discussion. I don't have any uh, announcements or anything like that at this, in this nature to be able to share with you, but that's definitely something that we've been talking about. We understand the concern with it, and we want to make sure that we can uh, have a policy that, that works for everyone and is fair for everyone. Federal Conservative leader Pierre Polyev was in Fort Francis in late July as part of his Northern Ontario tour. He says if he forms the next government, he would take a hard stance against illegal fishing. We would definitely impose uh, strong penalties on poachers and uh, we'd work with our American friends uh, to crack down on anyone who's doing poaching. Um, we need to protect our natural heritage and the species that uh, are legitimately hunted. The Ford government says it will be stepping up border monitoring now that fishing season is open and they will supply documentation to the Canada Border Service Agency pressuring American guides to have a work permit to conduct business into Canadian waters. Justin Hardy, TBT News. Let's take a look over at the Olympics. One of the main talking points aside from the competitions themselves continues to be the safety of the Seine River. It led to Belgium withdrawing from the triathlon event after an athlete who swam in the river got sick. CTV Genevieve Beauchemin has more. The Olympic Committee continued to navigate murky waters as athletes dove into the Seine today for the mixed relay triathlon. Looming behind the scenes, say athletes who made it to the podium, stress and uncertainty over pollution of the Seine. Yeah, we were looking out the window constantly like, oh, it's raining again. Um, so yeah, it would be nice not to have those feelings, but for me, I, I, I trust that they've made the right decision and put our health and safety. The race went ahead after Belgium pulled out of the competition. Triathlete Claire Michel fell ill after her first swim event in the river. No link has been established to the Seine, but Belgian reporting suggesting she suffered from an E. coli infection raised red flags. The IOC's Martin Fouquet, a retired Olympic champion in biathlon, offered Michel wishes for a speedy recovery and said the priority is the safety of the athletes. The IOC also insists lab test results show acceptable levels of bacteria. Locals and tourists love the sight of this iconic river in the heart of Paris. Still, there's little enthusiasm to follow in the athletes' strokes. Would you swim in this water uh, here? No. No, it's <laughs> impossible. No. Why? No, man. And why? For the color. Uh, my, uh, my country, uh, Sardinia, uh, is very, yeah. very good. Very clear water. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. <sea>. beautiful. <laughs> More beautiful. Uh, How much money could I give you to swim in it? I'll do it for about tenner, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just bought a house, he needs money. <laughs> I don't know, I'd probably want a thousand or something. More than that, maybe a million. <laughs> no, I'll do 50 quid. Yeah, 50 quid would be all right. I'd, go, I'd, be, I'd be open to be bartering with it, you know. <laughs> and for a gold medal, maybe? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah I'll do it. For athletes, there is a medal on the line, and some say that is at the heart of the debate here. It seems like they kind of were just hoping for the best, and no, the athletes are going to do it because it's the Olympics. It will be up to the Olympic Committee to decide whether the water is clean enough for the Seine to continue to be an Olympic venue. Geneviève Beauchemin, CTV News, Paris.
Back here in Thunder Bay, where the 34th annual Festa Italiana wrapped up today, and organizers estimated thousands came out during the weekend to celebrate Italian culture. Monday's festivities also featured a messy fan favorite, the eating contest. Jessica Clement reports. The final day of Festa Italiana got messy, as numerous attendees took part in the spaghetti, jello, and watermelon eating contests. Go! Mancha, 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 mancha! Yum, yum, yum. Wow, holy smokes. Like previous years, contestants were separated into two age groups, children and adults, and they weren't allowed to use their hands to eat. Sony Thomas won the watermelon contest, beating the other 10 competitors for the number one spot. He says he's never competed in an eating contest before. It's very impressive and it's the first time I am having a cultural program like this in Thunder Bay. It's very, uh, what to say, it's very fantastic. I am taking it as a sportsman spirit, that's why it's okay for me. It's, it's a fun. Danica Jones took the win for the spaghetti eating contest, but this wasn't her first time competing, as she won first place in the watermelon contest last year. She says she doesn't really have a strategy going into these types of events. Oh, I just come in hungry and then hope for the best, and uh, somehow it works, I guess. <laughs> I tried to do the Persian eating contest at Red Line, and it didn't come any near, uh, anywhere close to winning. So this is a good redemption moment for me. Over the course of the weekend, thousands came out to Festa to celebrate Italian culture through music and food. An Italian society spokesperson, Matt Scuzo, says they're always grateful to see so much support from the community. Obviously the nice weather has been a big factor because I think people would rather come out here when it's nice and cool rather than boiling hot. So we've been blessed with some nice weather this weekend. The community loves this, this event and we've had this on the long weekend in August for the last 34 years and, and I think people really look forward to it. So, you know, people, like I said, people go out to camp for the weekend and I think they make this their, their Monday night event before they head back to work the next day. Pascuzo adds they're going to take a little break after this long weekend but we'll soon get back to planning next year's Festa Italiana. The planning has to start pretty soon after because there's obviously lots of things that go into this weekend. And, you know, I think the volunteers who, who put their time in to do this weekend will, uh, will enjoy a little break, but I know everybody's eager to get planning for next year. Jessica Clement, TBT News. And the winner for the $3,000 Air Canada gift card will be announced tonight at 9.30. And from one exciting community event to another, as there's only two days to go until the much-anticipated CLE Fair opens, crews have been hard at work this past week, transforming the fairgrounds and setting up the rides. For the last uh, almost a week, pre-setting up and washing and cleaning, and uh, we're all getting ready for uh, the ride inspectors will be here today and tomorrow and Wednesday, uh, going through all the equipment, making sure everything is 100%. This year, 35 rides will be running during the fair, 17 for teens and adults, and 18 for children. Select Show's owner Jim Mills says attendees will see old favorites like the Ring of Fire and the Zipper, along with some new attractions. Down in Kitty Land, we've got the Reckless, which is for the kids, and uh, we've got a, a little pirate ship for the kids, so uh, we've got a good variety for everybody. We brought another gondola wheel in this year because the lineups are so great that we've added a second one for this, this season. We're just uh, hoping everything goes good. The weather, you know, last year we had a day of rain, but uh, I think we're going to be, you know, weather long-range forecast looks pretty good for us. If rides aren't your speed, the fair will also have a number of carnival games, food booths, musical performances, and exhibits. The CLE will kick off on Wednesday and run until the 11th. Local stargazers are getting excited for mid-August when the Perseid meteor shower reaches its peak. According to officials at Fort William Historical Park, this is widely considered to be the best meteor shower to watch, and people can check it out at the park's observatory. Joel Mendelson has more. The public viewing of the Perseid meteor showing is being offered at the Fort's observatory on August 12th from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. The phenomenon, often referred to as shooting stars, occurs as Earth passes through the debris field of the comet Swift-Tuttle, and it's possible to see up to 100 meteors per hour as they collide with Earth's atmosphere. Environmental ecological specialist Jonathan Reed describes the shower's beauty. It's like lights just flickering through the sky, and when you look at it, it's almost like you're seeing, f it's not fireworks, but it's kind of like when you see the fireworks coming down after the actual display happens and you see them kind of flickering out. It's like that, but uh, all the objects are usually white, um, very quick white. Um, sometimes you get a few colors in there as it burns up as well. 
Aside from watching the meteors, there will be a number of other activities happening at the David Thompson Observatory that evening. Visitors can check out old meteorites, learn about the Anishinaabe culture's perspective about the sky, and partake in a number of classes for all age groups. If anyone isn't able to make it down to the historical park on August 12th, the meteor shower can still be seen without heavy-duty equipment. You can see everything happening without a telescope. Uh, however, for best viewing, I do suggest using a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. It just kind of uh, makes things a little clearer. In the case of bad weather, there's still plenty to do here at Fort William Historical Park. There will be a stream to watch the meteor shower, and you can even touch and hold old meteorites in the Discovery Center. Joel Mendelson, TBT News. We're now joined by sports anchor Nev Van Pelt. Now, Nev, those border cats, it feels like they've been to the moon and back on this road <laughs> trip. I can't remember the last time they were right? home, but they're finally back tonight to wrap up their season. Yeah, it's been a long 13 games. The last two, not so great. It's two losses against the Eau Claire Express. It's going to be a battle against them when they're back home too, but we'll have the highlights from last night's game after the break.